this video contains topics that m you may find uncomfortable like like uh, topics of suicide and self injury and if that's something that isn't your cup of tea you can skip this video and watch the next ones or the other ones that i have on the on the channel i wanted to die it was on a rainy afternoon of november 2021 when i stood on a train stop with a shopping cart full of empty bottles waiting for the train to come it was my birthday at that moment my mind was just filled with screams of emptiness begging for help underneath the calm was a dangerous chaos in hindsight i kind of knew what i would miss if my life would end here i knew my husband would cry and resent everything because of what i was planning to do i knew my family would be extremely saddened to receive a casket at the airport instead when they saw me as a passenger when i left five years ago and they haven't seen me returning home ever since maybe the next day would only be filled with questions why i did what i did but right at the very moment nothing meant to me anymore i felt like floating in the sea of abyss the bliss i once had for my work was gone the skies were gray and the weather gloomed as though they were doing it for me in harmony with my inner world taking a few steps forward closer to the edge i remained still slowly closing my eyes feeling the soft touch of the wind brushing my face and then the train came full speed a punch of strong air slapped my face and a strong force pushed me backward to a few steps a loud cry from my deceased grandfather screamed underneath my skull, telling me, No. I was almost hit. Standing just centimeters away from the train. That was close. Too close. After the first second of it, I blinked my rounded eyes. My body throbbed from head to toe. My chest pumped wildly, punching my ribcage. While I froze, my mind wandered. Wondering, what the fuck did I just do? I shouldn't have done that. But it was too late. My life was sealed. I was still alive. And I still am. Now talking to you, alive, smiling, <laughs> and able to talk to you right now. Because... I don't, I don't know what you're struggling right now. I don't know what you have like issues or anything that affects you emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, whatever you're going through right now, I, I don't know. But what I know is that there is no, it, it's not just, life is not just about hopelessness and life is not just about the, the gray and the gloom the melancholy and it is not it is not something that you should be ashamed of if you've been or you are in this crisis because i totally understand what you feel i understand that you're lost and you don't know where you're going to you're heading to you don't know what's ahead and you don't know you're just in the plain chaos and you're just in a plain uncertainty and you don't know where and how you would like your life to move forward that's why i'm inviting you to write with me and explore the depths of yourself through writing and discover a lot of magical stuff hiding beneath your skin if you will but because life has been so hectic for you life has been so mad and tough on you you feel like the world is just about the gloom and the doom and life is just about the pandemonium everything is just about darkness life is just so dark that's what i believed before because i grew up in a belief in a strong belief an earned belief it's not my belief i earned a belief that i would be successful if 
I will have this and that amount of money and I will have a stable home and I will have a stable job I will have a car that was a definition of success that was embedded into my brain but then my soul was speaking something else and then it hit at the moment where I had my chapter of they call it the dark night of the soul and it's a cyclical spiritual journey that no one wants to go under but it wasn't like I chose to be in a dark <laughs> it wasn't like I chose to be in the dark it was just like I was born in the dark and in the dark I shall live and in the dark I shall create and in the dark I shall transform in the dark I should bear something to transform something to alchemize something maybe something in the dark within myself there may be something that I could and it's like a well for the lack of lack of explanation or lack of analogy it's like a well you don't know you're digging a, a well you're just about to dig and you don't know how many feet deep down or under you will find uh, the trace of water and you've been digging into it for hours and you don't know you still don't any don't see any trace of water in it but you believe that there is water underneath because that's what your knowledge said that's what traditions culture um, programming earned something earned like from school training education institution religion whatever everything every lesson that or every belief personality identity that you know deep inside wasn't weren't yours in the first place but were imposed on you for several reasons either for survival like in my case it was like i have to i feel like i have been like a stage actress in mo most of my life because it was like a way for me to survive emotionally the home that i was in wasn't safe emotionally i wasn't able to access my truest self you you could say in a home where emotions aren't welcome em emotional discussions weren't welcome on the table and it's very hard to open up when when you have people around you who will immediately dismiss your emotions the moment you cry the moment you lash out vent out anger it's seen as bad and unacceptable and because of these things i have learned that if i hide all those things if i learn to suppress and repress everything that is considered bad and dangerous for my survival because i will be physically you know like i will be beaten up as a kid when i do bad things if i'm a bad girl I will be beaten up, I will be humiliated, I will be... It was pure trauma for me. That's why as an adult, I have problems. I admit that I have problems with authority figures in any form, shape, because of the kinds of authority that, has, that I have learned and was imprinted on me when I was a kid. Like their inability to explain to me why I was, why I was beaten up, the... the why I was suppressed, why I couldn't say the truth, why I couldn't feel my feelings, why I couldn't, why I wasn't allowed, why I wasn't allowed to express how I feel and what I really think about things without being judged. Like, no, you're wrong. Oh, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't be like that. That's so unreligious. That's um, unholy. That's so. Life has blessed me with opportunities because. In those situations, I don't know if I have told anyone about it, but in those situations, like during those moments, like in the moment when I was beaten up, when I was being humiliated, bullied, regards to those who bullied me, <laughs> you know, wherever you are, to those people who have butchered my unicorns and my magical world during those moments i think like 
I always ask myself why? Why are they doing this? What did I say that made them do this? I was a kid, eight eight years old. Like, is it is this the only life that I have? As early as eight, I already have existential crisis, like the start of it. Because you know, like every time I ask something, it could either be dismissed. Or will, uh, or I will be punished for it, because, let's say a suggestion, let's say um, anything that I think is right for me, whatever it is. Like I go out with friends or play with friends. Like it wasn't like allowed all the time. It was like I'm stepping on eggshells all the time. It was like I have to check on my caregivers' expressions or their faces, their moods, I have to check all the time, like I have to be hyper vigilant all the time because I don't know if this suggestion, if whatever I say, whatever I have in my mouth, whatever that comes out of my mouth will either be punishable or or was it something like enough to face some bad consequences or maybe some mild Mild would be like a bit of humiliation and dismissal. The worst would be like being dragged out of public and being beaten up in the corner. And that marked my life. That's why I self-inflict. That's why I hurt myself. And because of what happened to me in my, pro- in my primary, in my formative years, I've always believed that life is just about the doom and gloom. Life is just about sacrifices. Life isn't about joy, pleasure, happiness. Because I remember my parents would say, you can't be happy all the time because tomorrow will be a sad day. Or it's like a belief. I don't know if it's Filipino or if it's just them. But they always say, you can't be happy too much. If I laugh too much, they say, oh, shut it up. You can't laugh too much because you might have a difficult day tomorrow. So because of that, I learned that I can't be happy. I learned how not to be sad to the point that I was numbed. And in college, it was, yeah, I snap, great. So if any one of my college mates saw what happened to me, or if any one of my college mates saw, see this video and if you could recall that moment where I snapped and kind of suspended the entire retreat. one It was supposed to be three day retreat, but because of what happened to me, I snapped and they didn't know what was going on. They didn't know what happened. This is the explanation. And it's been 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago, I guess. Yeah. And because I, w- I had this persona of being this student leader top notch or like you know like the at the top in high school it was like the class valedictorian valedictorian and so on so forth so accolades here and there so no one could expect that underneath this successful unreachable woman who looked so she you know she has it together she has her life put together and she deep inside I was dying. I mean I wanted to die. I wish to die every day. Like every day I wish the jeepney would have an accident. It was a selfish thing. It was a selfish thinking, I know. But at that time it was like I was so desperate for escape that I just wish that this taxi would just have an accident, would just die here, or I would ride a jeepney and then it would just have an accident. Every day and to the point like uh, it just morphed into self-inflicted injuries. So from there on, it almost cost relationships. It almost cost my life. Just because I was just drowned with this belief that whatever I have, feelings, thoughts no matter how disgusting and crazy they are you know like my thoughts and feelings 
um, my ideas, anything, my voice, either singing voice, my talking voice, anything that comes out of me, actions, was shunned and was shamed. And until now, while talking to you, I'm healing that. This is the reason why that I decided to to share this lesson, this part of my life, simply because I like you to understand why I decided to become a writer or why writing became like the, the option, the choice that has been effective, the most effective for me. Because my voice has been suppressed from day one of my life. And everything you saw, for those who know me personally, those things that came out or you saw was either out of ego, it was like a role play, like I have to perform, like I am this, I am that, I am this, I am that, I have a script to play. And I remember my sister described me once, you know, you're like a Rubik's Cube. You have different persona for different person. And at that time, it, was, it wasn't something like, oh, I, it was a big deal. And right now, looking back as an adult, just, to, just looking back at that statement that I feel that she saw a Rubik's Cube out of me, out of all the objects. And until now, I've been reflecting on it, like, like in hindsight, like out of all the things, like underneath the surface of the chaos and the, the busyness of life and all, I still have that in hindsight because it explains or it it gives me it's like a mirror it's the truth that i have to acknowledge that in every person actually i deal with and talk to i have different personalities and that was like okay so i'm and then ask myself like why is that so is that is that like a response is that a trauma response it was that like a, a learned skill as a child because uh, like out of survival so from there on i was like okay i have to ask myself more more questions like to the point like where i am not the stage where i'm defining the the question who i am who am i in a single you know like if you just imagine like a ball of light and i'm looking at the question who am i out of uh, like after years of shadow work after three novels <laughs> written like there are two upcoming like i really have literally i have two novels unpublished sitting as a digital file on the pc literally i finished that like within like i started writing no like again novels 2022 and until 2023, in 2023, I finished two novels. And then plus the novella, while we're moving out, we're moving into the new apartment. It's just crazy. So what I'm saying is, life isn't bad if you choose to change the lens, okay? My life has just changed, or my life just shifted when I started to listen to myself and when i listen to myself that means acknowledging what happened to me writing them down confronting my fears my trauma through writing through automatic writing through meditation meditative writing they call it automatic writing meditative writing or whatever but you know like is you involve your spirit in your writing you put your spirit in your writing that saved me and from there on, from processing all my traumas, everything that was like, when I wrote the character Valon of my upcoming book, he's like, he, he's like the representation of, of the dark side of me. And that book will come this coming December. So just writing his personality, writing him as a character was like a confrontation, direct confrontation between me in the past and me now because i would feel the cringe when i when i was writing him i felt the cringe i felt 
Because of that, I realized that actually if you put the truth, you put the you put your spirit into your writing, your writing becomes magical again. You your writing will have life again. But before anything else, before that happens, you must learn how to acknowledge your why. Just like Greg Mackin has written in his book and his wonderful book about essentialism, about the disi disciplined pursuit of less. Like in whatever, regardless of, regardless of whatever industry you're in, I mean, like right now, and then deep down in your heart, you know that you're a writer, then maybe it's time to listen to that little whispers and do something about it. Ask your why. Why are you doing this? Why do you do what you do? So I hope you learned something from me today. And I know this topic, or this video in general is a bit heavy and dark but I like to get into these things not just because I want to let them go but because I would like you to to take them to take the nugget whatever nuggets you, you take how many nuggets you, you take from me but that's the lesson why I became a writer why I wrote my stories like that or why I've written my novels like that why I've chosen to be counterproductive in this productive world, why I chose to be an anti, they call, it, they call me, they call someone like me like antisocial, but we're just, I'm just a person who rather just go against the grain because I know my why. This is my second life. And then I would throw that again because of, you know, like thinking their decisions are better than mine and my intuitive voice has lesser value than their traditions and you know we're now in the Aquarian age and it's time for the shift it's time for shifting this mindset that this is the only way and writing should be this and that it has rules and writing should just be about imagination without the, any basis from a re from reality I don't think like everything is not related at all everything is interrelated you put your spirit into your writing you put your passion into your writing therefore it is then understandable to put your trauma in it you put your experiences in it you put your senses in it and if you've been a follower on TikTok you probably heard me say look around look around or look within look around in a way where you see what you see not just oh look around uh, oh what's in there oh what's the trending scroll 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 no look around you what kind of tree did you see how many people are there how many bicyclers bicyclers how many bicycle riders have passed by or I don't know like you are the lens you are the lens you are the writer show show me what you see in your own way show me what you feel in your own way in your own words process your dark feelings your dark psyche embrace your you know after writing so much like after writing two novels unpublished i learned that i learned that the most effective way for me to really let go of the past and really let go of the emotional baggage that I've been carrying all my life from childhood was through writing fiction, writing in a way where I will be confronted by the character, the character's decisions, character's dialogues. It's like a feeling when I see and watch nice movies. It's like when he says something, and then it hits to the heart and then he, uh, cry those lines that made me cry those lines that made that crushed my soul i'll write them now because it's writing is letting go the moment you put your words your thought your feelings your ideas on the paper on the page in a blank page it's there someone can read it someone can judge you finally someone can criticize you finally someone can say something finally but for you, it's out there. It's out there.
<laughs> you know, I mean, but that's the life of the writer. And I hope that today you learn something from me. And yeah, like I said before, life isn't just about the doom and gloom. It's all also about the unicorns and the magical side of it. Only if you're willing to acknowledge what happened to you, your why, yourself, as long as you embody your truest self, you're connecting with your highest self, with your higher self, you're communicating with yourself in general. I don't know if that makes sense to you or if you've learned anything from me today, but that's the the nugget that I like you to take from me. Out of all the things that I have been giving giving to you, like yeah, I've shared my life story with you and but it's still up to you to decide which of these nuggets you like to take. But my suggestion is this is if you just imagine this is the nugget, a big nugget. So just imagine a gold nugget. This is a gold nugget. What kind of lesson, what lesson do you have you learned which you think is hitting you, punching you straight to the heart? Or I don't know what I'm saying now. <laughs> so anyway, that's for today and see you in the next one. Cheers.